Today's show is sponsored by our good friends over at Bonobos. You all heard me talk about how much I love Bonobos, and I want you all to experience what I have with this brand. Bonobos is a men's apparel company that has an amazing line this season. Oh, yes, they do. They have everything from wash chinos, denim, sweaters, casual shirts, suits, dress shirts, and blazers. I promise your threads will fit you better and you'll feel more comfortable than anything you've worn. I promise. I promise. I promise. Plus, they're your ticket to upping your style game. That's right, style game. They have great gifts for the brothers, the fathers, the boyfriends, the husbands, and friends in your lives. Go to bonobos.com. That's B-O-N-O-B-O-S.com for better fitting men's clothes. They're offering our listeners a very special deal. Use the code KEVIN to get 20% off your first purchase. That's 20% discount with the offer code KEVIN on your first purchase, along with Free returns and great customer service. As always, log on to bonobos.com to start shopping now. And Squarespace, pre-roll indeed. This episode of the chat show brought to you by our friends at Squarespace, where I used actually for uh, KevinPollock.tv. Oh, yes, I did. The all-in-one platform that makes it fast and easy to create your own professional website and or online portfolio. For a free trial and 10% off, go to squarespace.com. Use the offer code, you guessed it, Kevin. Welcome back, everybody, to Kevin Pollock's Chat Show. I am, as always, Chat Show. Oh, boy. Harry, Nathaniel. Hmm. Hurry, boys, with that Smirnoff. Hey, welcome back. Hope you uh, are enjoying your, uh, your lovely Sunday. Uh, if you're watching us live on the YouTube, hey, how do you watch us? We're going to read a couple of the emails from fine folks who have written to us telling us how they do KPCS. Right, you contact KevinPollockChatShow.com. The Golden Globes are on tonight, uh, if you're watching us live. Excited for uh, Tina and Amy to bring the yucks. And you gotta also, appreciate I'm, funny women. You gotta appreciate the funny women. Oh. There are never enough, unless you're talking to Jerry Lewis. <laughs> what? Um, can we, I've, I've bored everyone with how, uh, how much bullshit the Golden Globes are, because there's 139 Voting members? Right, we all know. It's, yeah. that's, it's pretty established. You could People, win with 71 votes. They go just to drink. It's a great party. It may be the single greatest, uh, eh, a, a giant gathering of annoyingly famous people. I like it because you get... With booze. It mixes the movie stars and the TV stars. Yeah. Uh, who will game. ever forget the year that Burt Reynolds won for what TV show? Evening Shade. Thank you. And he stood there and said, yeah, yeah, you should be sitting over there. Yeah, now I'm over here. TV. Yeah. Ted Ferguson. <laughs> <laughs> that was Norman. You just, that wasn't even, that wasn't you doing. You were doing that Norman Donald. Norman Donald. Donald. <laughs> you were doing Donald. That's Donald. exactly what that was. Uh, and who Which could is believe? what I do. I do impressions of impressions. Yeah. And well, that's the best way. I, I, you know, Dana Carvey and I learned how to do Johnny Carson by watching Rich Little. That's how it works. Someone nails it. Um, but yeah, so, so that was... A, how does Burt Reynolds win for Evening Shade? You don't. He wins for a career. Um, our guest today is uh, a big time in the nomination world and, and has been wined and dying. I can't wait to talk about the annoying aspect of that. Sammy? Yeah, buddy. You're going to be at the Night of a Thousand Stars this year again? You, you know I will. Until they invite me to the actual Oscars, it is the other best party in town. Well, the great thing is you get fed the actual Oscars. You saw Danny DeVito with a bag of carrots. That's right. Yeah. No food. They had load you in at four. I get a nice food and a lot of drink. I get to schmooze. I get Richard Kind yelling at me <laughs> about how I can sink a show. Yeah. It's the best. Oh, so <laughs> Was that the last time you saw him? Oh, yeah. Man, can you sink Boy, a show? can you sink a show, huh? <laughs> What a greeting. Um, yeah. Uh, but here's the most important thing, much more so than the Night of a Thousand Stars, is uh, this Tuesday, a mere 48 hours from now, uh -huh. my episode of Person of Interest, my Emmy-worthy episode 
of person of interest will air on CBS at 10 p.m. Here's here's my first I question. Would, I want to point out yes. that when I was, as we know, you know, I'm on an award-winning trivia team, Nickelback to the Future. But as I was doing some research for 2013, Person of Interest is one of the highest rated uh, television programs. That's correct. Oh, hell yes. I'm, I'm yeah. going to blow up after this thing, man. Yeah. It is. It's and I was, I was surprised. Yeah. It's a good uh, feel. Thank you. <laughs> uh, your character's name? Uh, 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 nice. Matthews. Nice. Owen Matthews. <laughs> Owen Matthews. I'm sorry. I've only been on some 60 plus shows in the guest star capacity. It's hard to remember all the names. Yeah. How many since you did Person of Interest? Uh, three. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Owen Matthews? Owen Matthews. Very Jewy name. Mm. Nope. Mm. <laughs> it's nice I wear glasses. They're allowing you to diversify well, your portfolio. Nice of them. Will you ever do Irish? What do you I mean? Do... Oh, no. <laughs> what oh. about me, Colorful Lucky Charms? Oh, no. No? No. Oh. We have fans there. You just. I've endeared them. Uh, have you? Yes. Yeah. They thought they liked you then. Well. Wait till they see you now. Mm. Um, Is it your show? Aaron? Anything else? On Monday? I uh, I just did a second episode of The Mom Show, the Chuck Lorre uh, uh, first season of, of The Mom with Alice and Janney and Anna Ferris and a whole bunch of other amazing cast. Matt Jones, who's going to come on the show, and um, the uh, Nate Cordry, who we love. And uh, yeah, I had a phenomenal time. My first episode doesn't air until January 20th. Oh, I thought it was Monday. Yeah, Monday the 20th. Better let uh, M M Julia Kay, if you're watching. Yeah, Julia Kay. It's not right on now. this Monday. It's not this is the when 20th. our our family's acknowledge that we're really in show business. We're on when we're on network broadcast. Oh yes, shows. absolutely. Because this is that's, completely fake. That's the only time. And movies too. They don't. That's not enough. Um, anything else, kids? Uh, I've got a couple of uh, listeners, e uh, watchers, emails. Peace and goodwill towards men. Go for it. Uh, not so much women. That's always a concern to me about the peace and goodwill to men. Yeah. Uh, what, what are you, what, war and... Uh... The women are nice enough. It's, it's the men that need to be told, get in line. Uh-huh. I think that's exciting and new. Hey, we've asked you to write to us, and I'm going to read a couple of emails here. And you can also win yourself a t-shirt, a Kevin Pollock's Chat Show t-shirt, which you will not give to the guy who cleans the pool. You will wear it. Um, uh, ask Kevin from Eric Butterfield. Kevin, I watched KPCS when it started years ago. Years ago. Listen to this guy. I like the video version so much that I stopped when I didn't have time. I didn't listen to the audio instead. The recent holiday break took away from my regular Hulu shows, and I reconnected with your show. Great timing. Having Tom Hanks on hooked me right in. Hulu is a great way to watch your show. Great video quality. The only issue is that Hulu Plus throws in commercials every 12 minutes. Now I'm working my way back through my favorite guests. Uh, Drew Carey comes to mind, happened, uh, uh, and uh, who knew he'd be a game show host? I remember his special where he did the X-ray specs gag. Uh, I watch in my basement in Richmond, Virginia, while I smoke, while, while smoking hookah. Useless info. And now and ask Kevin, has there been anything of note over the last three years that you have turned down to keep it from interfering with the show? If only. <laughs> uh, I mean, we had to cancel a couple episodes, and I went to San Antonio early this, early this year to. Um, so no, I, I don't know that I've turned anything down because um, we can always pre-tape shows and and uh, no, I mean no, no, no. How I do KPCS and Larry King game. This is from, oh, thank you, Eric Butterfield. By the way, this is from Matt Gardner. Guys, a real Butterfield. What a Butterfield. Hey, no butterball. Well, I, I watch your uh, hilarious program on my iPhone through the podcast app. Ah, I can search all podcasts via Airwolf, Nerdist, etc. from the app on the phone and pick and choose. Yeah, let's not be giving other channel shout outs. Hey, yeah, is this guy doing hey, an ad hey. for the iPhone uh, uh, podcast app? Uh, other ones I choose that I like and I'm hooked. I'm now going back and binging on past episodes to get caught up. I've been a fan of Kevin's stand up acting impressions prowess since the 80s. I am an older gentleman and fellow actor. I listen to Marin Pete Holmes. Right, here comes the script. Doug loves movies, <laughs> which brings everything full circle with your own Sam Levine, aka Little Wolverine. I'm sorry, what? And he kills it with his movie trivia prowess. Lots well, of prowess happening on your show. That's very sweet. Here's my Larry King game. Wow, there's no stopping with this guy. <clears throat> He's got himself a T-shirt. Ready? I went to see my doctor recently to save some blood, have some blood work done. My uric acid levels are high. But I'm pleased to report I don't have the gout. I'm taking vitamin E and kicking ass. 
Oregon Pipe, Arizona, you're on the line. I just like the gout. I like a good gout joke. Yeah, well, we're a big what fan. What is the gout? It's it, the gout. Because like in Lunch Lady Land, because she's got a bad case of the gout. Of the gout. Yes. It's Much love and happy disease. returns. Keep doing what you're doing. Matt Gardner. Larry King, winner number two. Whoa. Giving away two t-shirts on the show. I want to encourage people they haven't been writing in. Very impressed. This one from Cherry Bayhouse, and then we get to our guest, I promise. 37 minutes into the show. Just discovered Chat Show on Hulu and have proceeded to watch every posted episode in the last three months. Thank you for what you make look like an effortless two-hour interview every time. Larry King game, here we go. The hump on my right shoulder is a dead Siamese twin that I never had removed. It's what I believe to be the source of my fountain of youth. Let's go to our caller in Lebanon, Pennsylvania. <laughs> Lebanon. 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 We'll shout out for a little PA action. Lebanon so, is where oh, one of our past guests is from, Gillian Jacobs. Gillian Jacobs. That's from Lebanon, Pennsylvania. Good moving. Once again, it does come full circle. <laughs> uh, my guest um, is wildly co-responsible for arguably my favorite film of the year. Um, I think I have a top three, and, uh, and Gravity is indeed one of them. Please welcome Mark Sanger. Thank you. Um, oh, the last thing I meant to mention was a congratulations to uh, my fellow 49er uh, fans uh, for a sweet victory of the fierce Carolina Panthers, which couldn't possibly interest you in any way, shape, or form. I'm afraid I have no idea what you're talking no. about. Now. You must have a favorite football team, though. Uh, I am possibly the only Englishman who doesn't follow soccer. And how Cricket? could that be? Please no. explain. No. Well, the problem is when you're uh, my physique... Uh, at school early right. on, uh, what you find is that uh, you're kind of uh, long and gangly. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't succeed that well at sports. Right. And when you're not part of the, the gang, yeah. um, then you, uh, yeah, I, I, I didn't get interested. Yeah. Not a huge basketball program in the UK. No, there is, there is. But, you know, I found that I, it was easy for me to stand at the net and just put it in. Yeah. Uh, but the running around, the running it, it just doesn't, it doesn't work. It hurts my back and stuff. So. <laughs> sure, I understand. My people saw, uh, sold concession. Uh, the hats and T-shirts. Really? Yeah. The Jews. <laughs> um, my, uh, let's, uh, let's talk first about recent events. Yeah. Um, you're in town, thankfully. First of all, I want to thank you, one of the few guests who uh, just really uh, gave a shout out on, on Twitter. And well, you said, I'd like to come by and watch. I'm going to be in town. And you were silly enough to say, come be in front of the camera. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, watching's not good enough for well, us. Listen, I'm a very big fan of the show. I, oh, love, I love the format of um, uh, the informality of it all. Yeah. Uh, and so, yeah, I wanted to come and um, uh, witness that. Yeah, sorry, you could have been on that incredibly low. Maybe next week. No back of a couch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you have a much better seat now. Um, but thank you. Uh, uh, when I said watch nonsense, please be on the show um, because no, it's kind of jam packed while you're here. How long will you be in town? Uh, well, it's this a visit. It's a week of uh, yeah of promotions and, and marketing and uh, very happily awards. Yeah. And um, uh, this is my day off. And right. so I, I, uh, I decided that I wanted to come and, uh, and hang out with you guys. And yeah, so I'm here basically on, in, in the three hour window that I have available. Right. Very nice. Um, now, wait, so the Golden Globes are tonight. Is there not an editing category? No, there is not. Those sons of bitches. That was my opinion as well. <laughs> uh, but there is, uh, I'm going to the after party. Oh, of course you are. Uh, where, yes, I can consume booze, I, I assume. Oh, please. Plenty. Um, much, plenty. But, uh, no, I will not be at the party itself, at the, at the, at the ceremony itself. Try uh, a line maybe from the original film, M.A.S.H. My doctor says I need one of these every 15 minutes. Just hold up the drink. Well, uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, that, well, the parties are kind of the thing, and it's one of the things we said about the Golden Globes in general. It's the most exciting part is the, the parties. But... It, uh, <laughs> You know, it's so trite to say it's everything to be nominated, but here's my argument for that. Nominated means you made the final mm. top group, mm. whether it's three, four, five, or in the case of Best Picture with the Oscars, ten. Um, yeah, well, I don't understand. Why is that all of a sudden? Why is it going to ten? Uh, there are debates as to why. Oh, I can answer this. All right, Sammy, let's go to our very own Sam Levine in the Tower. See, here's what happened. In 2008, uh, The Dark Knight 
yeah. uh, was by far and away the most popular film of the year. And for the first time in a long time, the most popular film of the year financially was also arguably one of the best reviewed films of the year. Right. And it did not make a nomination because that was the last year that they only, they limited the amount to five. Uh -huh. And so then in an effort to boost ratings and make more casual movie fans want to watch the Academy Awards, they said, we'll have 10. And then that was a fucking disaster. <laughs> because the, of the next year, there were maybe only five movies that deserved to be nominated. Oh, so this isn't the first year that it's, it's No, ten. no, since 2009, they opened it to 10. And oh, so wow. after that, in 2011, or possibly last year, is when they went, uh, OK, we can make it go up to 10. Right. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> so it'll be somewhere between 5 and 10. So we don't have to put these horrible films up in there. I, I, I mean, no offense to the film, I think The Blind Side was nominated for Best Picture in 2009. Best and, picture and Sandy Bullock won Best Actress for the sure. Picture. Well, yeah. she was great in it, but yeah. was it worthy of of Best Picture? Well, I also don't like that they put um, animations in separate category, but they could put animated films in the in the ten. Yeah, yeah. So then it's like it's just a waste of a slot because they're just going to give it to whatever Pixar movie that came out that year. They've got their own slot, yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. like so. I don't know why they waste. It's all so much of it is arbitrary. Um, which again, the nominations is. Uh, you're the finalist this hmm. year. No one can take that away from you unless you allow the winning and losing aspect of the one uh, entity or, or group who takes best this. So, well, uh, uh, noms, uh, Oscar noms haven't come out yet. We're, we're talking a BAFTA. We, we just it, got the BAFTA. Just these yeah, giant yeah, awards yeah, yeah, in yeah, general. Yeah. You know, the, the, the thing is that so much of it becomes political. Yeah. Or certainly with the Academy Awards, and I'd love to know your take on the BAFTAs as well, one wins for a career as opposed to an individual effort hmm. that has been nominated. One could argue in the case of uh, Scorsese, when he finally won his Oscar for The Departed, it couldn't possibly have been for that film. I don't know. I mean, uh, I, I think The Departed was a really, really good movie. It's one of my favorites of, of his movies. I think there is a certain element of that, but I think, you know, politics is always going to be part of the award season. Isn't yeah. It? It's because, you know, um, the award season is, uh, it is, it is driven by financial aspects um, as well as the, the, you know, the creative aspects to it all. So there's always going to be a, a political uh, undercurrent to, to all of that. Right. But I think, um, you know, definitely in the case of, uh, you know, like uh, Spielberg finally getting it for, uh, Schindler's List. I think sometimes, you know, there is a, with any, with any group, some, sometimes they get um, standoffish with, with particular directors for a little bit and then and finally reward them. Yeah. Um, but, you know. Uh, or in the case of something like uh, Pulp Fiction, they'll give screenplay because it can't win Best Picture that year. That happens a number of times. It happened with Billy Bob Thornton with Sling Blade. Sure. It happened with Christopher McQuarrie with Usual Suspects. It couldn't win Best Picture. Why? Because because they were going to give it to somebody else. Right, right, right. For their own political gain or what have you. Yeah, I mean, uh, I think it's it's probably um, I think it's probably the same. Uh, you know, the world over is that. Um, is it for first time uh, being nominated for a BAFTA. It certainly is. And yeah. please tell me a. Uh, how you uh, were informed? Uh, I was informed uh, by, I was actually getting the kids ready for school. Mm -hmm. um, and I was informed by an email from our, uh, our producer because uh, Warner Brothers contacted me the night before and said, uh, by the way, it's the BAFTA noms in the morning. And uh, uh, you should be uh, aware and ready in case we need to contact you for any reason. And uh, I was like, well, that's very good. But I have to get my kids ready for school. And so uh, I was getting the kids ready for school, and um, I, I'd pretty much forgotten about it. And, uh, and then uh, David Heyman emailed me and said, congratulations, I suddenly remembered. So it is, I don't follow the, 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 the sort of the dates of the nominations and that, that sort of thing. Yeah. I'm very, very honored to be nominated. Sure. I mean, why wouldn't you be? It's, it's a f fantastic for me. I've been in, in the industry for 25 years, and finally to, to, to get something like that is yeah. astounding. Um, but at the same time, um, I didn't get into the industry to, no. to win awards. No. So, or get um, into union disputes, yeah. I imagine. Um, you, are, you seem unbelievably sincere, even though we only met some 37 minutes ago, when you say, I'd all but forgotten about it. You do understand that for a lot of us who appear on camera as a career choice, those sort of thoughts don't occur. 
I'd all but forgotten about. Is it because you were getting your kids ready for school and that's all consuming? No, that does sound like bullshit. I know. It no, does no, sound like, it but, doesn't. But, no, but it, I could tell it wasn't false when, humility either. When you when you've got to get my kids to school, uh, it's easy to forget those. Then enough of the awards. So, tell yeah. me about the kids. Yeah, <laughs> no, no, no. There was, <laughs> it was, what ages are they? They are uh, four. Oh God! <laughs> uh, four, Let's go seven. to the board. No, no, it's only because it's because uh, uh, unfortunately I'm out here while my middle one. She just had her birthday, Aww. so uh, uh, I had to. Uh, I FaceTimed her uh, in bed uh, in the morning, waking her up with happy birthday. So she is now seven. Nicely and my done. My eldest is is nine. Good save. Thank you. Four, seven, and nine. Um, Ooh, that's that's that. You got your hands full there. Well, I live. Yeah, I live in a house with four women. So uh, that is oh, why I look oh, wow. this, this age. I understand. At, uh, this, this. Tomorrow's your 40th birthday. Thank you for bringing yeah. that up. Oh, that's, that's on right. the internet, sir. I'm not uh, spoiling anything. Yeah, I know it's hard to believe uh, <laughs> that this is, this is actually 40. A, a mere 40. Uh, but uh, it's actually, yeah. yeah. You have to tell yeah. this is 40. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. nice, Sammy. I'll give you 40. <laughs> I've been yeah. wondering what this is yeah. uh, 40 as it would look like. Um, so, OK, so, so you find out with an email, um, and then 25 years of work, but I'm sure there's also the, that crap that the studio does or, or maybe people, how many people had the nerve to say to you prior to that email, you know you guys are going to get nominated? Yeah, but you, that's, that's, it's interesting you say that because Alan Arkin on here talking about mm. nominations. It is that thing is that you, um, you know, I say that it, it doesn't matter, but of course when everybody says that you kind of go, oh. Right? They get in there. there. Yeah, and then, then he's rattling around in there. And then, of course, yeah, it, when, when it has happened uh, a few times in the past few weeks, it's been, been very happy with some of the, um, you know, I was at the LA Film Critics uh, Awards last night. Yeah. Um, uh, it's, it's astounding. It's all very, very surreal. But um, uh, I certainly... Um, so last night was the LA Film Critics. Correct. The awards were actually given out? Or is a nom nomination? No, 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 no. Was, you, you get this is what I, I don't quite understand how the how the policy works, but certainly there's there's some that you go along and you're nominated and you're in the room with the nominees and they announce the winners. Right. And then that that one was like you you're told you're a winner and you go along and it's a very prestigious event mm -hmm. um, where you know you get a um, uh, they've they, you know they they do a big spiel about the movie and, and your background and everything. It's it's really amazing. And do you and Alfonso go up to collect the best editing together? We do. Yeah. Yeah. And um, yeah, that that just must be spectacular. Yeah. I mean, again, you, these aren't the reasons or the things you're thinking about when you're doing the work. No, but then when, as you say, when somebody then comes in and and uh, starts talking about, hey, yeah, you know, that's that's going to happen, and you get you kind of get excited about it. And then, of course, what you have to do is you have to suddenly start dealing with the fact that um, I don't. Uh, none own a of us. Tuxedo? I certainly don't own a tuxedo. <laughs> That's a very good point. I've actually just been speaking to somebody about that today. Um, uh, absolute truth. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I also, um, you know, none of us who work in editing or post production, we don't do these things in front of cameras, right. as you can see. Uh, we do what we do is uh, we're not used to it that we're used to hanging back. Right. And so it's um, it's. Uh, uh, I think if you look at all the photographs of any of us, uh, you know, on the on the red carpet walking in, you can always tell the post production people because the ones a little bit, you know, uh, stiff, so, stiff, slightly awkward, um, uh, and with the bright lights uh, shining off of our pallid faces as as today. So, uh, you know, we're not um, we're not used to all of that, but. Uh, well, all the more that I appreciate you making time for us today, honestly, because uh, not at all. you know. Uh, we, we, we try to be uh, diverse in terms of uh, a little off the beaten track in terms of just having comedians on or just having actors on. Um, no, but that's what I love about the show. You yeah, the, you, the diversity of, of everybody on here. Yeah. Well, thanks. Um, and, really and, diverse today. Yeah, we're, well, well, thank you. You're, you're helping to create another curve for us, as it were. Uh, now let's go back a little. Could we, can I just say this to jump the hell in, these, Sammy? I, I, I get that you're joking, but just so you know, uh, people have reached out to me from all walks of, of life over the show, mm. and we have a large uh, audience of people who want to be involved in filmmaking in every aspect of it. Right. And so I know you're joking, but I guarantee you there are people who are watching and listening who are going to be like, I want to know about editing. I want to know about no, that process. I, I, 
questions. And we, yeah, we I, lots I, of questions. I, and I do, I do get that, by the way. I do get that because okay, um, you know the, uh, the the weird thing for me is that you know I am one of those people, and so for, you for years, you know, you you watch these things and you you chase these these interviews down and you look at all those people that you really do respect. Right. And so I completely get that. I just can't understand that anybody would be interested in what something that I want to say. However, <laughs> however, yeah. having said that, the the, the benefit of uh, you know uh, another wonderful, wonderful thing about you know being asked to these uh, ceremonies is then I get to go along and geek out with editors that I've been sure. looking up to for years. Well, last night um, there must have been some filmmakers there as well. That oh man, last night I was. Uh, just going inside, and I was introduced to Bruce Dern. Oh, Ooh. nice. And I spent five minutes talking to Bruce Dern. And as far as I was concerned, I was happy to get in the car and just go home then, you know? Yeah. Bruce Dern, he did a Jack Nicholson impression. Uh, did he? Yeah. And, and what was it about his work that had grabbed you prior? Just because it's the character of the man, you know? The, the, you know, there are some actors, Arkin, Nicholson, sure. you know, those, those guys who uh, just their, their own character, they take this unique character and then um, are then able to plug that into the particular actor, yeah. the, the particular character that they're playing. You know, so there's, you know, they're always watchable. Bruce Dern is just yeah. so utterly watchable. And he had a, 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 a hugely, um, cinematic iconic moment it, it, that it, as he explained it to me when we uh, worked together uh, several years back uh, on a film directed by visual expert uh, Robert Legato um, that he was the first actor hired to portray a character that shot and killed John Wayne no yeah and which was mentionable because at the time it was unacceptable from studio standards until right. this script came along and the Duke insisted, yeah, I'm gonna, die the in, Duke. I'm gonna die in this one. Wow, what was that? And I'll be damned if I remember the name. <laughs> Sam will know. Of, um, it's, a little, it's a little out of my range, yeah. but. Uh, Someone will have it from the other room in seconds and put it up on the yeah. board. Um, but it was the first time ever, so whoever the actor was that was hired to play the part, mm -hmm. it was explained, America's going to hate you now. Right, right, right. And it's, he said there were a number of years where he literally couldn't work. Wow. Because all the studios were, we don't want this guy in our movie, the America hates him. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. Isn't so, it interesting there was an era where those things hadn't happened? It's like the toilet flushing in Psycho. Yeah. You know? Yeah. You know, there's, there was a, there was, it was an era of innocence when certain things just weren't done. Yeah. I was unaware of that one. Yeah, I, I was too. Um, and and uh, so who, let's see, Spielberg must have been there last night? No, not last night, that was Friday. Um, <laughs> uh, that was at the AFI lunch, yeah, Spielberg and... The Cowboys was the name of the movie. He was killed by Bruce Dern and the Cowboys, the Cowboys. Uh, sorry, AFI yeah. dinner, Spielberg was there. And, and AFI lunch, um, lunch, Mr. Spielberg right. was there. In fact, that, that was, uh, yeah, that was a really, that was a fun thing to do because um, uh, AFI is television and film. Oh, good. It, so, so there was the Mad Men guys, there was Mr. Ham, uh, there was the Game of Thrones guys, and uh, I had to, um, they did a, you know, with all the TV stuff, they did a, uh, like a show reel showing all the, the most amazing moments, and uh, I found myself, you know, I'm, I, I'm on Netflix and I'm, I'm catching up on a lot of those things, and uh, I found myself uh, watching the last moments of the last episode of Breaking Bad. Which you didn't want to see yet. I am on episode two of season one. Oh, oh my goodness. So do you just do this? <laughs> you know, I, I'm still going to watch it. But that absolutely, I, I was sitting there thinking, huh, where is it? Uh, oh. Was it an important moment? Was the very last scene? I'm not going to say it for in, in case anybody else. Well, don't say it. what it was, but was it the last scene? I, I can only assume it was the last scene. Is <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. By, by, by the way, here's to the people who made that decision. Oh, <laughs> seriously. <laughs> what an asinine of all the things you could have shown from that episode. I don't, listen, Why? I think there's a general assumption anyway. that... that, that uh, Everyone's you, seen it by now? Yeah, but there's, there's a, those of us who, uh, you know, work uh, 17 hours a day yeah. and go home and... Uh, it was one of my, uh, I was asked to do this wonderful podcast, uh, Pop My Culture podcast, their big, which I think just dropped yes. so I can talk about this with Vanessa Raglan and um, Cole Stratton. 
spoiler alerts. This whole thing where mm. we have to be careful not to say, you know what, no, it's on you to say, you leave the room if you haven't seen this yet. The rest of us need to talk about this thing. Right, right, right. And when you're the person who's left out and catching up and saying, no, 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 don't, don't, don't. You know, it's only then that you can appreciate the, the power of that. Uh, uh, I think so. But also, yeah, you have to be a certain person who is, who is intrigued enough and, and, and wants to be. See, right. my, my wife certainly, she, she doesn't mind so much knowing what happens at the end. She's, she watches those things knowing that, you know, you know like how in the old days you, you go to the, in the movies in the 50s and 60s and you could just walk in at any time. Yeah. And you could walk in in the middle of the movie and stay and then, for the stay, second show. And, and then just watch the beginning of the movie and then leave. And that's why Hitchcock said the, the, the marketing campaign for Psycho was you don't come in after the beginning, you know, something like that. And um, my wife can watch TV shows. Spoiler from, alert. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Psycho. The lead actress gets killed. What? What? Like 20 minutes in. Come on. Well, right. You can't do that. She's no longer the lead actress at that you point. You can't shoot John Wayne. <laughs> yeah. Oh, shit. Spoiler alert, yeah. the Cowboys. <laughs> yeah. oh. Which, by the way, I haven't seen either. So, um, <laughs> exactly. Um, Anywho. But, uh, the, the, yeah, but she, can, she can start in episode six and watch through to episode 13 and then go back and watch. And I just cannot do that. Right. I cannot do that. And so that's why I catch up on the Netflix and, uh, and what have you. But in this day and age. And thanks for calling it the Netflix. You're officially 40. I'm really sorry. That was just that was purely for you. <laughs> the, the, uh, in this day and age with the media, um, there is no way that you can avoid it. The other thing was Dexter as well. Dexter, yeah. I, I, I got to season seven. And then I'm going through a website, one of the other media websites one day, and I'm scrolling through up, and there's, the headline is, Dexter, blah, 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 in finale. Yeah. And, okay, so I'm not going to Thanks for that. carry on with that anymore. Thank the you very much. The password indeed. is Lumberjack. Yeah. <laughs> now, uh, there should be, they, they, I think people should be actually more um, uh, aware of those things. Because yeah. there are people like me, sad people, who actually want to follow a story from the beginning mm. to the end without right. having the middle ruined, you know, right. or any, anything with it. Well, let's get back to your story, sir, as much as you'd like to put that off. Mm. Um, so, uh, Playground Logic, according to the research, seems to be one of the fo first full features that you worked on. Was, was this with, with your brother, Matthew, or? It, uh, it actually, uh, that, that movie, I was going away t on location uh, to work on Troy. Mm. And my brother, my brother and I have always um, made short films since we were, we, we've known what we wanted to do since we were four, I was four. Uh, and we, uh, started off making Super 8 movies and, you know, the video and um, finally got to the stage where I'd done a couple of short films and then I was in the industry. My, my brother was not in the industry and, and he was uh, trying to get in. And so he, met, he, he asked me for his help before I went away to Troy. Wow. I set him up with some bits and pieces. And he, you were going to do visual effects on Troy? I or? was going to do the visual effects editing on Troy. Right. And... Um, and uh, he, I'll be honest with you, he did that pretty much on his own. And I think out of just pure brotherly love, mm. put my name on the end. Oh, wow. Um, and um, I came back from, watch, from working on Troy a year later, and he finished it, and that was my name. So I take no credit for Playground Logic whatsoever. Or blame. Or blame. Yeah. And it's also, it's one of the best films I've ever worked on as well. So, uh, no, it was, it was... So check out Playground Logic, everybody. I think, yeah, you can watch that. It, it's, it, my, my brother, he's, he's actually a really, really, really talented filmmaker. Um, and he, uh, as with, with anything in life, we all, we all get to this stage where, uh, you know, life overtakes you. And his, his life currently is in a situation where he needs to earn some money and get on. Then he's going to get back on the, on the filmmaking wagon, I hope. But in the interim, his movies are up on, on Vimeo if you choose to watch them. Yeah, please check that out. Um, so tell me, you, I read that you were the moderator back in December for the call sheet. They hosted uh, a couple of Q&As for Gravity. They did. And um, you seem to enjoy that role as the moderator based on the research that I saw. Were you uncomfortable with it? Or I'm uncomfortable that you know all this stuff. That's really, yeah. I did actually enjoy that. Um, because, um, but I think, and I'm actually doing a, I'm moderating on another thing when I get back for a movie I, I didn't work on as well. Um, but uh, For the call sheet folk? Uh, no, it's for a, it's for a, um, 
uh, 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 Scandinavian movie series. Um, there's a festival in London called Nordicana, and uh, one of the, the lead actors is this guy called Axel Henny, mm -hmm. who's an amazing, amazing actor. You see Headhunters? Headhunters. It's, a, it's, a, it's from a book by uh, Joe Nesbo. It's a, a, a Norwegian movie. Mm. And uh, Axel's just the most amazing actor, and he's a good friend of mine. I just did the last movie with him. We get on very, very well, and they asked me to moderate the Q&A with him. And I just, um, uh, yeah, I just, uh, I enjoy that environment. You know, like a little, you know, 200 people in a room yeah. is, is a lot of fun. I have to say it was a bit different doing it at the Chinese theatre the other night with uh, a 1,000 people in the room. Uh, that was, but I wasn't moderating that, but. Uh, yeah, they were all stoned. <laughs> Were you just on the so panel as one of the participants yeah. in making the film? Yeah. Who moderated that? Mr. John Favreau. Oh, that's right. Yeah. 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 Um, well, that must have been a, a bit of fun. That was great fun because I, uh, I got off the plane. I got back to the hotel. I had my jacket pressed. I went to the Chinese theater that I'd never been to. And heard about your whole life. Uh, well, it was more about, it was more important to be Kevin. Um, uh, and then I, um, yeah, I turn up and suddenly you're walking down into the Chinese theater and uh, it was, that was really cool. That's, right. that's the thrill of, you know, of, of the, the, the back of, you know, when you do, do these, these big movies occasionally, you get, you get to do those uh, really mad and crazy things and that was one of them. Yeah. Whose feet did you put yours in the cement out front? I haven't done that yet. Oh no! I haven't done that yet. One of the thrills. Actually, you, you know, can't I can't believe how sh small Humphrey Bogart's feet were. They have they have a similar thing in Cannes. And penis. Really? Well, they put that back. That's what they said. Wow. Oh, okay. Well, I won't be trying that out. Uh, the they have a similar thing in Cannes. Right. And I have I have my hands in uh, when I was like 18 or something. I had my hands in Scorsese's hands uh, from uh, from Cannes, but I've not done it on Hollywood Boulevard. Yeah. Well, it's right out there in front of the Chinese theater, which is no longer, of course, called the Chinese theater. Now I feel like this, we've got into racial territory. No, it's it's it, it, man's Chinese theater. I think I it's TCL. It's I oh, I thought it was TCL. It's not Grumman. Oh, is it TCL? Yeah. TCL. What I don't the know hell what is TCL? What, what is that? It's a Chinese company. Seriously? They took over. Well, I like that a Chinese company owns the Chinese theater. No, you don't care. No, for it. no, different thing. <laughs> totally different. All I right. don't care for it. Um. All right, so we are uh, crazed fans of the Tim Burton, and you worked on, according to the dossier, Sweeney Todd and Alice in Wonderland. And Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Really? So this is visual effects editing? Yeah, the, right. what you, you know, I, I, my background is uh, editing. Right. Uh, you know, I started as an assistant editor and I worked my way up. I started on film, would mm -hmm. you believe? That's how old I am. Yeah. So, and just, just as film was coming, being taken over by digital editing. Right. So I'm kind of I'm kind of proud that uh, you know myself and you know uh, a lot of the guys I work with we started off um, in that transition. So right. we have that 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 foundation you yeah. know, to our sort of our, our cinematic ed education. Attaching tape physically to the Absolutely. film. Absolutely. You know, Tomorrow Never Dies. Uh, there was me and um, Ian Erskine and Steve Pang and Gavin Buckley uh, working around the clock doing days and night shifts. Uh, Doing what we call conforming, which is taking what they were they were editing on Avid, and uh, we would then have to match those edits on the film, wow. uh, on on film. And right. so we would go through and yeah, and joining the movie up and um, uh, you know those those are, I got a lot of uh, fond memories of that. Um, and it uh, and basically then I graduated out of that and film sadly kind of took a back seat. And um, and then there came a point where there was this. Um, you know, I'm very uh, keen on paying the bills, and sure. the, the visual effects editing is it was a great way of uh, running sort of a parallel uh, career at that stage. So um, I could jump from doing the, the assistant editing to the visual effects editing, and uh, Tim and his guys uh, asked me to come back and do that. Uh, you know, I did that three times, and uh, what what an experience! Yeah, because as a creative person he is uh also completely unique and original and one of a kind sure so i'm curious what it, what it's like to work with someone who has such a specific vision i know in the dossier you gave um a sort of comparison as it was asked of you with him and alfonso and the and the and the separation was mm -hmm. that alfonso's vision sort of evolves during the process and tim does everything he can to 
uh, maintain the integrity of the initial vision. Is that absolutely? I think I think Tim, you know. Uh, I've not discussed it with him, but def definitely the, the impression you get is that uh, he has the script. He knows exactly what he, um, uh, the way that he wants to execute it. Right. And then, you know, as filmmaking is a war for, for anybody, then it's just a frustration, for, as, as it is for any director, of, of actually just committing that vision. Right. You know, getting that out of your head yeah. and, and onto the screen. I mean, for anybody, that is. Uh, that's the battle. That's the battle. And so um, that's that's what he does, and you know he he, he really does. Uh, I think uh, try to just you get the impression he tries to translate what's in his head directly to the screen. Whereas, as you say, with um, Alfonso Cuarón, uh, Alfonso comes in with a, a very very clear idea of what the film's going to be in his head. Mm. Uh, but he's also, I think, part of the joy for him is. Uh, Letting that evolve with those around him on the stage, yeah. and you know the actors, and certainly his cinematographer Emmanuel Lebetsky, you know, if you can come to the stage with a uh, a very very clear idea of what you want to commit to film, and then build on that, be able um, to improvise in the moment. And that's that 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 that's a, just a, a very different way of doing it, but yeah. um, you know, two different um, contrasting ways of of of, of working, um, but both with uh, amazing results. I'm gonna have a couple of Tim Burton follow-up questions, but first, please allow me to uh, allow uh, the fine folks at Squarespace to help pay my crew. How about that? Let's see if I can get through this without stumbling too horribly on the words. Let's take a break, please, to thank Squarespace, the all-in-one platform that makes it fast and easy to create your own professional website or online portfolio for sponsoring today's show. As I mentioned before, I use Squarespace uh, to build and design uh, and launch, rather, KevinPollock.tv. Check out their work if you want there. Uh, Squarespace is the place to do it if you're an artist, a restaurateur, which today we found out does not have the letter N. Restaurateur, no N. DJ, lawyer, writer, or just some guy in Illinois who loves to rant, Squarespace has an intuitive website template for you to show off your stuff. Squarespace is the only website platform that allows you complete creative control without having to mess with HTML codes. All you have to do is use their drag and drop user interface to snap your website into the shape you want it. There are so many options for customization and is that how you say that? Maybe? And everything looks shiny and professional. Shiny. That's right, shiny. Just like the new you. Of course, because of Squarespace, it is the perfect website hosting platform. If you like using HTML codes, you can. That's your option. Start your free trial, repeat free trial with no credit card required. And if you decide to sign up for Squarespace, make sure to use the offer code Kevin, K-E-V-I-N, to get 10% off and to let them know we sent you. If you want to support this show, which so many of you insist you want to, here's an opportunity. That offer code again, Kevin, to get 10% off. Squarespace, everything you need to create an exceptional website. We thank them. Um, what, would, what did you just tell us what you might have found surprising about the brilliance of Tim Burton when it comes to dealing with your particular expertise and area of? What do you mean with, uh, in terms Working of? Working with Tim Burton. Just any example of, I knew he was brilliant, but wow, that just happened. It's those little moments, you know, that we collect along the trail. Yeah, I, I guess visually, yeah. you know, that's, that's the thing, is that, uh, you know, uh, there's, with, the thing is with, with Tim, of course, he's getting to the stage where there's an expectation of, that you know what Tim's visuals will, will be, you know, because people have tried to mimic it so many times. Sure, the snake know. and beetle juice, one, one is Right, one exactly, and, the, you know, the curly-whirly things, you know, and, and, and all those sort of things. Uh, what surprises me, the greatest thing about you know, working on those movies is coming in at the beginning where you're seeing all of the designs early on. Many of which he's personally drawn. Sure, and, and you know, he has a, he's a core team that he, he works with. Those, you know, there's a couple of draw things he's done with, while sitting with me, he's like, uh, you know, we're doing like some video conference and what have you, and we're talking about, he's talking about design and what have you, I'm not talking about it. He's talking about the design, and then he draws something on a, on a little notepad. And I'm looking at that thinking, if I could I'll just have get that. him to sign yeah, that. Yeah, <laughs> um, But, you know, the, those moments where, you know, uh, I think 
people assume they 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 know what makes a Tim. Thank you, sir. That they, what makes a, a Tim Burton film, but he then goes and surprises you with those designs. And um, I know he does a, a, a number of exhibits. Don't do that. You'll make me want to pee again. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. We've been to the one uh, just in New York or here too. Those. Um, I went to both. Yeah. You didn't get to go to the one at the Black Mud, but I right. went to both. Yeah. The one in New York was beyond. I really, really, really wanted to uh, to go to it. Yeah. Well, because that's why I mentioned the stuff being hand drawn by him initially, yeah. because he had his stuff dating back to elementary school. Yes, he had things. He had like doodles that from. Elementary school, and, elementary school. He, all, and all the way to present. Time. Sure, He's sure. Just sure. collected in these vats. I don't. Was that they had all of large Marge's eyeballs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't know where he keeps all, yeah. all of that stuff because it, you know there's obviously quite a lot of it. But you know, I think um, uh, for me, that's you know the pro the problem with what we do is that uh, you know. Uh, a, uh, movies are sometimes spoiled uh, because you know uh, you're working on them. They sure. Uh, they, do you know what I mean? Yeah, you're inside. You know, it's the man behind the curtain stuff. And if you are with the man behind the, the magic curtain, trick, is given away. Yeah, you know, yeah. which actually is, is you know that. But that's the part of what makes gravity such a joy is that people uh, are still trying to work out the magic to a certain extent. I love I love that sort of that, that aspect to it. Yeah. But certainly with with Tim, you know. Um, uh, the, the the greatest part is coming on and seeing those those pre-production uh, designs, and often we use those obviously in the edit a lot. Certainly on Alice in Wonderland, we sure. we were using that. On Alice in Wonderland, they we had animators working with us every day in order so that we could um, uh, put in uh, uh, you know the little animated uh, rabbits and, and things into this otherwise pretty much empty frame with yeah. the green screen. Um, and so those little joys, those little moments of, oh, wow, I can see how that's going to go. No, those, those, that's the greatest thing about working in the cutting rooms is you can see uh, the inception is right. often, for me, more satisfying than the, the, result, the result, I think. All right, well, in, in regards to that mm. inception, um, we're going to have to uh, begin our discussion on gravity at this point because uh, there's so much to cover. Um, you know, it's just gravity. The documentary. I didn't work on the the, the sound of bullock. Yes, of course you know I do. Yeah, yeah. I do, which is one of the things I wanted to share with okay, the, with everyone today. Good. In terms of all the nominations just, and things coming your way, that it's all a, a bit of a laugh. You having a laugh? Um, as of yesterday, gravity has grown 670 million worldwide. So when you work on a film for 18 months before the actors show up, which is one of the things I want to discuss because I've never heard of that happening. Uh, without a green light, because before the actors are hired, who's going to actually green light the film? Um, even in your wildest dreams, a number like 670 million worldwide isn't allowed in. It's easier for me to assume that's so, but is that so? Yeah, I mean, uh, the problem with working on a film for that amount of time is it's very difficult to lose focus on, uh, you know, we all knew that the movie was going to be good because it's an Alfonso Cuaron movie. You know, it's going to be up there. Yeah. But it, it really is just a question of, uh, we think it's okay, but we can no longer see it. Right. It's really a case of, can, you can't see the wood for the trees. Yeah. And you're in the middle of it. You're absolutely. And for 18 months, you're in a vacuum. Yeah, I mean, uh, 18 months. <laughs> I mean, Alfonso joked last night at the, uh, the Los Angeles Film Awards, he said, uh, the Critics Awards, he said that uh, we still haven't been greenlit. Yeah. Because um, we, there was, gravity I was just- I don't get the joke. Well, because, because the studio, yeah, the, the, the studio basically, uh, we, we, we were always gaining momentum. And we, uh, ever, I think the, the actors came on board and we were still waiting for a green light. And then we found ourselves shooting and still waiting for a green light. And then, then by, by, by the end. So, um, there was this process. That was his where, way of saying, thank you for torturing us, you fucker. Well, it, it was one of those things, you know, you have to understand, I, I think for the studio, Warner Brothers had a, a lot of courage because we were presenting them with um, a lot of animated, you know, there were some storyboards I was uh, editing with and, uh, you know, these um, uh, very early on animated stick figure type things with blank faces and you know we put in some music and some sound effects in there to try and lift it but it looked very very sketchy early mm. on and uh, quite a leap of faith 
Absolutely. How do you how do you how do you cast that? How do you com get somebody to come in? Because also we didn't know what, how we were going to do it. Right. So well, that was the thing that I love that that I do want to ask you about. That it all began with um, uh, a script written by Alfonso and his brother, son, son. Yeah. Oh was, wow. Yeah. I just saw the last name. Had yeah. the, the, the research didn't show me their relation. Father and son. Oh wow. Um, and and. And is it a full script the way one sure. would normally get? Sure. Uh, more stage direction than normal? Nope. No. Because the movie, for my memory, uh, you've seen it 600 times more, is, is 70% stage direction. <laughs> that is to say, visual. Yeah, I, the, the thing is with, with Alfonso is that uh, everything starts from the script. Right. And so the script was, was written in a conventional way and was, you know, this is a very beautiful story. Right. Um, when I came on board, it was myself, Alfonso, and the storyboard artist sat around a table talking about exactly what the stage direction would be, if you will. Right. And it's at that moment that, uh, you know, talking about moments of, of uh, clarity about oh wow, I can see what this is going to be. That was one of them. And you suddenly realize, okay, so the camera's not going to be locked down. Okay, we're, we're going to be following them. They're not going to be locked down. Nobody had done, ever done that before. And the, just around that table, you could see Tim Webber, the visual effects supervisor, myself and the storyboard artist. And you could all of a sudden see that, okay, um, this is very, very different. This is very, very new. But the script is always the heart and is just as, as uh, is the bare essentials for 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 our phone. Sure, it has to be. Um, how much can you share about the uh, filmmaking style that you guys then had to create in terms of the camera not being locked down and the actors not being locked down and in motion together as one? Well? well, the thing was that you know. Alfonso, he does have the whole movie in his head, and what I was saying about him is obviously things, he, he's happy for things to evolve if, if it benefits the, uh, the story. And he, uh, so what basically the process for us was that, you know, I, I would just literally start cutting storyboards together in the same way that you would do a feature animation. You okay. know? And it would be, I was playing George Clooney's character, and my assistant, uh, Tanny Goding, was playing uh, Sandra's character. You guys were voicing at some point. Yeah. Before, long before either actor had been hired. That version of the movie exists somewhere. Yes, I don't know where. Um, Kenny? No, no, no. no, no. no. <laughs> um, please don't play that. Um, and um, and then. But that, there's a moment I remember reading. Forgive me for interrupting. Where Sandra was on board and was brought in first, and she was acting to your voice temp track. And that for that alone, she deserves the Academy Award. <laughs> <laughs> You're not wrong. Yeah. Yeah, it's a. Uh, uh, I don't. Uh, to be honest with you, I don't think she remembers that um, because it was for her turning up that first week. It must have been, you know, awful because this. What is the shite? Exactly. <laughs> what, what what's happening? Because there was no set, there was no green screen, you know. It was a very different thing. Anyway, I'll come back to that. Yeah. Otherwise, I go off on my Sanger tangent. The um, the so basically, what happened was we we started with storyboards, and then those storyboard edits mm. would go to the animators, and the animators would work with Alfonso like in the morning, mm. and starting to adapt those storyboards, and then I would then get those updated fresh animation. I would then edit those, and then. Uh, Alfonso would then come back from me and uh, we would worked on that a little bit and then he'd go back to the animators and there was this cycle going on where we had to keep up with each other because of course everything was evolving. The, the, everything, the camera moves were changing, the blocking was changing, the lighting was changing, the lines occasionally would change. Mm. Um, and so, so you're literally changing the way one thinks about how to capture movement. Yes. And you know, certainly from an editorial point of view, it was you don't have the benefit of a horizon. Yeah. You don't have the benefit of a, you know, a, a you know a locked spatial plane. There, you know, you are uh, dealing with not only telling the story, but you're also dealing with not losing the audience because. Well, it's interesting you mentioned horizon and losing the audience because what you guys were able to accomplish, and I, I would love to hear in specifics how this part evolved. You were able to use the, the knowledge that the audience has that the debris is coming back around mm. 
and the sunset and the sunrise and the earth's rotation and the distance and allowing the audience to start to keep track of these things in terms of when the hell is that damn debris coming back to wreak havoc. And you have been able to create tension using these known elements. Mm. And I'm wondering how much of that was in the script. That was, that was always there. The, to, to a certain extent, you know, for me, the, the debris is the villain. Mm -hmm. And so uh, the villain always... Also the original uh, version of Darth Vader, not to spoil too much, oh, Catherine, but please. he too was originally just debris. Debris. Yeah. That's interesting. Well, the things you learn on this show. <laughs> yes. um, uh, debris Vader, first name. <laughs> not Darth. Sorry. Debris. Sorry, you were making it important. No, I was not. Um, <laughs> the, the, so it was on the page. It was in the script initially that the horizon and, and the earth and the sun setting and well, no, the, the, the idea a timetable? You know, yeah, the, the idea of the, you know, a, um, uh, the, 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 the sun coming up and, and rising, giving the, the audience uh, definitely, um, uh, that's your countdown clock. Yeah, and, and there's, there's a, a few dialogue bomb. pieces that certainly say, we've got 17 minutes, kids, let's make this Right, happen. right, right. Yeah. And um, certainly that is part of the design process that was going on during that, that, that early. And by the way, in terms of lighting, that's why all the lighting had to be done at that stage. Yeah. Because, uh, you know, there's a, not only is there uh, the beautiful design of the lighting that needs to interact with all of the shots that they were they were designing, but also there's a continuity of mm. the of the lighting. You know, um, all of that is going on subliminally right. for the audience. You know, and I think that's what makes it kind of uh, that. I think anything anything that Alfonso does is submersive because he has a lot of things going on subliminally underneath. Right. So let, let me ask you this. Forgive me, guys. I'm going to jump around a little bit. Um, when we see Sandra Bullock in her suit floating through space, often throughout the film, on average, give or take, what percentage of that is her in a suit? And do you know what? I'm not sure I can tell you that yet. <laughs> um, that's the you may have to wait for the Blu-ray for it's that It's one. one of the beauties and joys of the film is because you stop thinking about that question and you just go on the ride. No, that really is the success of it all. You know, when we had, uh, I'll stop mentioning him, I promise, Robert Legato on the show, I said the success of Titanic is you see the trailers, you w go to the theater wanting to see this ship sink, and you can't wait for that brand new visual that we've never seen before. Right. And if the film succeeds, for those that it did, to the tune of over a billion mm. dollars, um, when it starts to sink, you don't want it to because you're caught up in the story. So this is what happens with gravity. You can't wait for the debris to come back to cause the ravic and then... Uh, wreak the havoc rather but then as it's coming you are now emotionally caught up and you and and worried and concerned for your characters and it's not just visually stunning no there's genuine in, intense emotion wrapped up in these characters well again you know that's, that's the thing with alfonso is that you know as amazing as the visuals were going to be everything is driven by one the story and secondly the performance yeah and so you know it was very very important to us all uh even the visual effects supervisor tim weber that um the performances permeate through the visual effects, yeah. and, th and therefore the story is being told in the, in the best possible manner. And so, um, yeah, I mean, I've known people uh, tell me that you know they've uh, they've watched the movie once and then they've gone back a second time because they want to work out how it was done and, and watch it from a different perspective. But the greatest compliment is they got wrapped up in it and, yep. and then had to try a third time. Yeah, you know, and uh, that's that's pretty cool. Yeah. You know, no, that's, that's one of the great compliments. And I think it's, it's unavoidable. And even the naysayers in terms of, of whether the story works or not, you know, for those that it does, it's this one element that makes it spectacular. And, uh, and then, of course, the discussion, that aside, um, we've just never seen anything like this on film. Yeah. Um, and so you're getting caught up in not just the visual, but the emotional impact of well, that's the what thing. What she's about, going through, if nothing else. Yeah, the the, the movie works on several different levels. Yeah. You know, uh, I think the 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 gut reaction uh, that a lot of people get is that it's a roller coaster. Mm -hmm. um, but again, in terms of the subliminal things that's going on, there is a heartfelt story going on underneath that. And how many movies actually have the, both of those? Not nearly enough. Right. <laughs> Very so, few. You know, that's. I I think that's what. Um, 
what drives it. And, and you know, Alfonso's movies are like that, is that there's always so much going on mm. that there is, you know, the, you are, I think the reason gravity is, um, uh, you know, the experience that it is, is to a certain extent you're bombarded with this experience. You know, you've got the emotional thing going on, but with, with all of the visuals as well, it's, it's a real um, trip. Yeah, no, that's a great word for it, because that's what it is. Um, Sammy, you had at the ready the name of the uh, asshole expert who came out and said this couldn't happen in oh, space. Oh, yes, Neil deGrasse Tyson. Thank but you. And then how much, yeah, how much did you love Alfonso's reaction, which is, this is a fictional film, not a document? There's, the thing is, there was, there was a, lot of, a lot of time spent uh, getting everything as absolutely accurate as you can be. And Alfonso is a very, very meticulous man. Right. So I can assure you that certainly... Efforts were made nonstop. The, it was the daily... We were dealing with the, the story, but we were also dealing with the science of it. Right. You know, and the way that the tether moves between them, that's, that's, all, that's not just animated randomly. That's a computer simulation of how it would interact. And once, if we decided to move the characters around a little bit, right. um, that would change the simulation of the tether. These are all things that were planned meticulously. Constantly. And yet there comes a point where you are, yeah, you're, you're watching the movie as a, as a story. So yeah, I think we, we, you have to respect those guys you know, who, are, who are making those points because they, they are going in and um, uh, probably seeing the movie from a slightly different aspect to, to Sure, to well else. there's respect and there's also dismissal. I think these two things have to happen in tandem <laughs> if you want one if two is to enjoy the film. Sam, you well, I think I think he said he re he was a big fan of the movie though. He did. He said he loved the movie, but you know, for him, it took him out of it when you know she did this thing that oh, she could never do that. It's like well, you have to allow. What's interesting, if I may, is to the layman. I think Jamie and I might have t talked about this, but to the layman who knows nothing about. That what the technical advisor on the film would know, and the and the and the painstaking efforts made to follow actual science. We know from movies and television that if you're in a capsule and the door opens, someone or things are going to get sucked out. Yeah. How else does Sigourney Weaver get rid of the right, alien right, right. if not to open a portal? Right. So for our layman's absolute lack of knowledge. When a door opens there and the uh, Clooney character comes in or what have you. Spoiler and, alert. And she, yeah. <laughs> so so the, the notion is, um, you know, for, for some of us, you know, as much as you're in the middle of it, the little alarm goes off and says, wait a minute. Um, and in the storytelling process, uh, it's clear uh, as looking at all of it as a whole. Mm -hmm that every aspect was by design. Yes. That all of those choices were by design. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And so from the editing standpoint, are there moments for you when maybe you weren't privy to the technical advisor's insight where you asked questions? Uh, was I asked questions? Were you that? asked questions to Alfonso? Wait a second, can we do this? Oh, sure, there were moments when, but, um, you know, the, when you're, when you're in that early stage where we were kind of blocking the movie, to yeah. listen, um, pr in, again, at that stage where there was no cast, there were uh, moments in the story that uh, we were coming across where we needed to then go off and, and have a check. And I have to say, Andy Nicholson, the production designer, by that stage um, was pretty much, he could probably go into space. Yeah. Um, by that stage, so Based he on was the amount of knowledge he had. Absolutely, absolutely. And so, you know, he was often. In fact, there was there was one occasion I remember. There was some. Um, uh, he corrected uh, some expert at some stage on on uh, their knowledge. Um, and Andy's a, like a, a wealth of of all uh, knowledge on uh, on all of that. And so, what would happen is. Alfonso and I would be sitting together blocking the thing out and someone would come up and, we'd, and I would just get on the phone to Andy and if Andy didn't know, we'd get on the phone to NASA. Um, and uh, if it was important enough for the story that that thing needed to happen that way, then you know, uh, Alfonso would make an executive decision as to whether or not we would be absolutely scientifically accurate mm. or 90% scientifically accurate, 98% scientifically accurate. So 18 months you work on the uh, building of the elements before mm -hmm. the actors are brought in. Mm -hmm. How long is principal photography? 
Three months. Three months. And where, where was that done? In space. Of course. Yeah. That's correct. Uh, uh, <laughs> um, it was... Uh, such a great answer. <laughs> such a great but here's answer. the problem. We, for a split second, you were like, oh, makes sense. Yeah. I've seen the movie. <laughs> I remember I, I, the first thing I tweeted after seeing the movie was, I refuse to believe this was not shot in outer space. Yeah. Yeah, no, that was... The well, there's a funny thing the brain does. You know, I'll never forget walk, walking out of the theater <clears throat> after seeing the first Jurassic Park film and right. looking up. Mm. Not thinking I was going to see a dinosaur, but my brain couldn't help but look up. It's just weird. And the first time I dived into a pool after seeing Jaws, oh, man. And my eyes were closed. Man. There's no logic that says, why am I nervous? Yeah. I'm in my friend's pool. Yeah, yeah. There are no sharks here. Well, the, uh, I mean, uh, the I, brain just does that because I, it's been affected. Yeah, I think there's a little, there's a lot of people I see like on on uh, Twitter and what have you saying that they've uh, they'd be scared to go into space now, which I don't think is necessarily the effect that was was, was desired effect. But you know, um, it, it's it, astronaut signups have dropped <laughs> exactly. off seventy one percent. Exactly. Um, uh, but uh, definitely, I think what to a certain extent, you know, it di it did bring in a, like a, a kind of a new angle into into the horror thriller sort of area. Is you know, we've done the sea, uh, we've done uh, dinosaurs, and then suddenly you're up in, in outer space. I don't think anybody had ever really contemplated. Um, never before in in uh, cinema had you really seen space as the as not only the villain, but the um, you know, as, as a protagonist in the story, effectively, you know. Yeah. And, and space. Well, I saw you, uh, and you tell me if someone else was responsible for the term, I imagine so, survival drama at its absolute core. Mm. Um, that's what we're dealing with. Yeah. Do you know if the pitch initially was simply, we've not seen no. an astronaut detached from the ship and the movie is a survival drama from that perspective. I don't think so. I mean, I wasn't on at that stage, but uh, I mean, I would imagine, again- Because just that alone yeah. is in fact something There's a poster we've there. not seen as an entire film. Yeah. How do you get back? Well, it'd be, it'd be interesting to see if anybody else does that now. You know, uh, picks up on gravity. If gravity's the only one to, to really do that. Obviously, you mean because the, there were a few alien Ripoffs after Alien. Well, that, that was the thing is that you know I that think that was a first and turning it into a haunted house sort of experience. Exactly, yeah. exactly. I think no previously. I think this is part of the, what makes Gravity different and part of Alfonso's genius is that previously uh, in s space movies, everybody's all together and inside and and, and you know uh, say you've got um, you know four astronauts uh, floating together they they will probably be standing up mm -hmm. you know and they'll all be it's what Ap um, uh, Alfonso calls the um, the apple box uh, theory is that you know at, and in any stage if it felt as though we were the camera was here and the actor is standing on a, on an apple box over there and we're just traveling past them then it was not doing the, the the story justice but every movie before had been based in that realm yeah that's Alfonso's genius is that you know uh, uh, yeah I think uh, the probably the testament of that is that every space movie from now on will follow the, the science that, that gravity was more true to, you know. A template. Yeah. Uh, let's allow some actual fans of yours that are not in this room uh, pose their questions. Your mom? My family. Um, this is from Mike Dawson via the Facebook. Did Stephen Price's music exist as completed compositions before the final edit? If so, did he edit to suit the music score's concept? Did you edit? Uh, it appeared to me, Stephen, uh, uh, Mike Dawson goes on, it appeared to me that there was a very close relationship of the visual and the musical that was refreshing in Gravity. Mm. A damn fine question mm. by yeah. Facebook, which I'm not a fan of. Um, to answer that, there was, Steve came on uh, and like, I have to break it up into years. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, he came on, I think, in the last year. We're talking about four year window. Th three, here. yeah, three and a bit years. Yeah. So he, ca he came on, up until that point, what, uh, basically we'd been through Alfonso's iTunes library. And that it was, and by the way, that is the most 
extensive iPhone, uh, iPhones, iTunes library. Um, there's the most extensive iTunes library I've ever seen, and he has this the most amazing sort of tonal uh, abstract stuff uh, in there. And we populated the movie with a lot of that, playing around with all of that to temp, give temp stuff, needle drop, temp stuff, yeah, temp stuff to to uh, sell the concept of the movie. Right. You know, so. Uh, by the time uh, Steve came on, you know, he had a good idea of, of the angle that Alfonso wanted to play. Emotional. Exactly. Um, and, you know, because we weren't playing it all on the, the obvious sound, uh, Steve's music would be um, playing a different role to, to you know, conventional uh, music, I would say. And, um, and so he kind of picked up the bat from there, and basically everything that I've been working hard on for two and a half years was thrown out. And he came in and then started working with Alfonso to the cut as it was at that stage. So at that stage, Steve and I would be communicating daily, um, and he'd be updating me uh, daily. But the cut, to answer his question, the cut was in fairly solid state by that stage. And had been done to the temp. And have been done to the temp. So, um, but a damn fine question. A very good question. Nice going, uh, Mike Dawson. I imagine that is probably Steve Price on that, <laughs> r uh, rather than Mike posing Dawson. as Mike Dawson. Yeah, yeah. Nicely done, Stephen. Uh, this one comes from Seth Pomeroy. Uh, his Twitter handle at Seth Pomeroy. Since editors are often the unsung heroes of movie making, well, listen that's to him. Nice. Uh, who are some of your influences and favorite editors working today? I had the uh, great, great joy to find myself speaking to Chris Rouse yesterday, mm. who is Paul Greengrass's editor. That man knows his stuff. That man knows his stuff. Uh, now, when you say that man knows his stuff, was it not only your awareness of his work prior, but actual conversations you had I'd never met him. It just in terms of being a fan of his work, right. you know, and and how, uh, you know, just the. Um, Were you able to geek out a little with him and the speak that you I, and he I understand? Had to, I had to really stop myself because it was one of those situations. I'd just been introduced to him, and uh, of course we had nominated in similar in the same categories and, and a couple of awards, and so I didn't want to sound as if I was some. Uh, you know, because I, I, I didn't want to talk about the awards at all. I just wanted to, to geek out with him. Right. Um, um, but uh, I had to stop myself in those situations because, you know, you end up just sounding like a dick. So uh, I, uh, I will pick up that conversation with him uh, perhaps uh, in, a, in a couple of months. We've promised to have dinner perhaps uh, back in the UK. But uh, I'll give you another example. Mike Hill and Dan Hanley, who uh, cut for Ron Howard. Mm. Uh, I love Rush, but do they work on that? Uh, they did work on that, yeah. and they, they, again, they're nominated for a few things. I haven't seen it yet, because typically in this industry, uh, you love the industry so much, you get into it, and then you, you never ever watch any movies. Yeah. Um, the editing on that's pretty spectacular. Yeah. And da uh, Danny Boyle, cinematographer uh, from Slumdog Millionaire, I think he won for Slumdog Millionaire, was the DP on Rush, and boy, do you feel like you're inside the car. Right, right, Oh, right. my God. I think that's... Um, they're doing another movie with same cinematographer. I forget his name. Um, Josh will put that on the screen in seconds. Um, the, but I, I, again, I had the great privilege to meet them um, uh, a couple of months ago. Um, they were in London. Um, other than that, I have kind of, I have favorite editing moments. All right, give me one from a recent film. Can I give you one from, I'm not, I'm not a recent film. Give me one from the last 30 years. I'll try that, okay. Um, you've seen the um, uh, Parallax View? No, oh, sure. Okay, so in the Parallax View, uh, Paul Apprentice and Warren Beatty are talking and she's paranoid that they're after her. Spoiler alert. <laughs> <laughs> what year would that have been, actually? Okay. I think 76, 77. Really? Okay. And um, I was just making the sound of a snake. I didn't know if it was the 60s or 70s. It, it, by the way, if you haven't seen the Parallax View, skip uh, two minutes on from this point because you really do need to see the Parallax, parallax View. It's a great movie. Anyway, she, uh, 
uh, she breaks down in this most amazing uh, performance where she's paranoid that she's going, they're going to get her, the hitmen are going to get her, they're going to kill her off, and you know, there's been this sequence of events that's leading up to it, and she's convinced that she's the next on the list. And Warren Beatty is just thinking that she's overreacting, and he's trying to calm her down. And he sits there, and you know, Beatty's amazing in it. Um, he's sitting there, and she has this, this, this breakdown, and he just sits on the chair looking at her as if to say, come on cut to her face on the morgue table, and the sheet comes across. It's the most simplest of cuts, but it's the most amazing of cuts. Powerful. Unbelievable. Yeah. That, there's a, you know, I, I like those, those sort of moments. You know, the simple is often the most powerful. We now play poker with her son, Ross. Oh, that's right. Anthony Dodd Mantle is yeah. the deep. Oh, you're right, right, yeah. for Ron Howard. There we are. Thank you. I don't know what happened. Yeah. Josh is sleeping Thanks, on Thanks, guys. Wheel, I guess. Um, let's see, Valentina, Valentina, Valentina. Valentina V from Facebook, any editing books you recommend? I loved Walter Murch's conversation. Uh, no, I, d I have you. not. That was the correct answer. I have not correct read was any no. editing books. Um, I don't want to switch gears off of gravity, Please but do it. can we talk a little bit about Probably my favorite film from the 2000s. Yes. Children of Men, which oh, yes. I know you worked on. Yes, I did. Yeah. Uh, thank you, by the way, it was for me. helping make that thing come to life. <laughs> that is, that was such an amazing, powerful film. Yeah. Uh, so I'm curious, what, how would your involvement on that came to be? Um, uh, I was the visual effects editor on on that movie, and so I actually came in very late in the in the day on, on that film, and. Um, uh, I didn't read the script. Um, I'd, everything had been shot. And I came in and we were preparing for a screening. And it was literally, you have to see the movie now. And you have to start working on the movie now because we need to be doing this within 10 days. And so it was really uh, in at the deep end. And the movie, so you saved the picture. I mean, what I'm hearing, anyway. <laughs> I'm not going to say that out loud. <laughs> they were in deep doo-doo, as yeah. we like to say around these parts. I think Kenny was the first to say it. Mm -hmm. uh, I, all I can all I can say is um, that mm -hmm. uh, I came on. I remember I was going on holiday at the, the same week as the thing. So I literally not only was I under pressure to uh, uh, to, to get everything that needed to be turned around done by then, but also my wife was giving me pressure. I need to be on holiday with the, with the kids. Oh boy! So uh, there was a, a real kickball at scramble. You know, one of the like you know working a week of with no sleep, and it was at that stage the movie was um, it was. It, Structurally, it was together, um, but we were still at the stage where you know the those immersive single takes oh. uh, had not been uh, kind of uh, uh, they they certainly weren't um, visualized to the point where mm -hmm. you know it was it was bit, the idea was being sold. Um, but that was my first real. I remember sitting down. I, I watched the movie and then had to go straight into to meet Alfonso and. Um, uh, again, talking of just amazing moments, again, you just see he's taken this story, which is it's a story told one way, but he's done something oh so different with it, you know. And, um, you know, again, immersive cinema. Uh, for me, um, you know, that, that film has uh, the same uh, effect as uh, gravity does really in that you know there is there's some showmanship going on 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 the surface but underneath it there is this real uh, heart um, and sort of tragic uh, story you know the emotional life is devastating yeah 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 and I think in, in terms of you know in terms of villains um, you know and, and and creating threats the idea certainly uh, I didn't expect my wife to enjoy that movie at all but the the, the thing is she's engaged because Obviously, the, the lead character is, is pregnant. Spoiler alert. Um, um, that creates, and then you've got these guys running around in a war zone. That creates a, um, uh, a level of threat yeah. uh, uh, that, uh, again, Alfonso manages to pump it up there. I don't, again, I'm not sure in terms of geekiness, I'm not sure what really I could tell you about that one because. Um, you know, for me, it was just about my, my first experiences, my recollections is my first experiences with Alfonso, um, 
which is kind of, I think, why he... I was going to say, obviously, it went well. Yeah, yeah. It went. <laughs> you, I remember, you didn't disappoint. Well, you know what? I, yeah, I, way to not fuck that up. Yeah, well, listen, uh, there's still loads of time. Uh, I do actually, I remember going in day one and, and, uh, and accidentally completely offending him because I was, uh, you know, he, I think he was trying to test me day one, you know, some of those, he needed some um, of those news reports designed. And he said, so I, what I want you to do is uh, I want you to, uh, this afternoon I want to come into your room and I want to see, it's like a news, uh, op news opener. Uh, we're going to start out in space and zoom down all the way down to uh, the Earth and what have you. And he started drawing me little sketches of, of what the graphic was going to be. And um, he drew um, Britain or something. And uh, I, uh, uh, I, I criticized his drawing. <laughs> Of course you did. And uh, I remember everybody in the room going, <laughs> because I just offended the, the, the director. And um, was it because of the home pride that you corrected his drawing? I, I, don't, I don't know what it was. No, I just. done UK justice? I, know, I think it was stupidity on my part. And uh, anyway, but the, the, from that moment on, we, we got on very, very well. Yeah. Um, I mentioned the 18 months you worked on the film before the actors were hired and the green light had had. Who was financing 18 months of work? Warner Brothers. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, without green lighting, they're saying we're going to finance 18 months of the or however. I mean, did, did anyone well, know? No, no, no. Because when I came on board, it was going to be a year from beginning to end. That was the idea. Including principal? Yeah. It's going to be in theaters. Uh, after 12 months, but it was one of those things is we went into a, limb, a state of limbo on this movie that, that is unlike anything uh, I've ever known, where because we suddenly, you know, everybody's going, oh, okay, so that's how he wants to do it, you know, um, and the, the planning that was going into actually achieving all of that was going on at the same time as, uh, you know, actors, actors may be coming in to, and being attached, but then schedule, schedules would evolve and then they had to move on. Um, and so, you know, it was, uh, I, that, that was one of the really toughest times on the movie, was we didn't know, we knew we were doing something really good, or potentially really good. Um, we were very, very excited about it, but we didn't know whether or not everybody would just turn around and go, guys, you've just gone way too long. Right. I'm sorry. And yeah, that's, that's what I was going to ask listening was, how long does this, you talk about ticking clock, how long is that hanging over your head? It seems like it might have been hanging over your head a couple of years where you just keep the ball moving forward, knowing yeah. it's getting better, it's getting better, it's getting better. He must be showing them something to quiet them down on occasion. Oh, yeah, no, we would, we would be working deliberately. I mean, we were coming over here and, and, uh, and running stuff for them. Right. Um, and so there was... When you said, we, we need just another 12 months. I know <laughs> yeah, it's no. been 18 already. It was, I don't think there was conversations as like We're just that. getting increments, like, give me three more months, give me... I, I'm not privy to those conversations. Yeah, all, I, all I can tell you is that what uh, an amazing negotiation, though, that he must have been involved in. Yeah, there was, I, I would I would bring the tape across with Alfonso, and, and we'd we'd run it for the studio, and then I would duck away and 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 let them decide. And you know, I have to say, Warner Brothers really, really did get behind the movie, because um, you know it was uh, it it was such a big leap of faith when you're dealing with all those factors early on. Um, yeah, you don't know, you don't know, you don't know, you don't know, and then three and a half years later, oh, we do know. But they could have dropped. They could have dropped it. Sure. But then they didn't. They stuck with it. Mm -hmm. And then when they stuck with it, then, of course, uh, you know, Sandra Bullock uh, came on board, and then uh, uh, you know, uh, George was available. Um, for me, one of the greatest moments is after, you know, 18 months of working with animation. And by the way, the animation's coming along quite a long way after 18 months, because you know, the cut is the cut. Yeah. Uh, we had this weird thing where I was thinking, okay, so we've cut the, we've, we've cut the movie now in a pretty, pretty good way. And the actors are gonna come in and they're just gonna get to shoot those shots. It's not like, okay, so we're gonna set up with a master right. and then we're gonna you know, go around here and we can you do that. need no. bits and pieces. They are just gonna come in and say, so you know you've got this, this uh, you know, paragraph of dialogue. We just want you to start at this word and end at this word yeah. and that's what the shot is. And they. The, the, the acting that is involved in order to deliver that is amazing. And so, uh, uh, you know, they, they come on and, they, and uh, all of a sudden I'm getting performance in the dailies uh, to fill 
to replace what I'd done. Instead replace of your own dreaded voice. Exactly. And, but, you know, and all of a sudden there is life yeah. to the movie. And so that was the payoff. Emotion. Yeah, that was the payoff. Is, is all of a sudden you can see... Um, I'm guessing your version was just a little bit more monotone. Uh, and and also Comanche Indian in the in the accent as well. Yeah. No, there was there was um, uh, there is a lightness to Clooney's performance that um, you you might anticipate and still be surprised by. Yeah. I think. Oh no, but that's part of the success of of, of his character. You know, um, yeah. the way that he does that character is. Um, uh, you know, when we found out George was going to be. Uh, uh, be in it. I remember everybody going, oh, you know, everybody realizing, okay, that's 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 just going to work. Right. Although I, I must say, the I felt. Why am I making a point of this? Sammy, stop me. Tackle me to the ground. Stop. Don't do it. <laughs> Was it ever debated to your knowledge the moment in the script when it's shared that this is his character's last mission because I felt like spoiler alert yeah really do you need <laughs> do you need to say that we really need to put a disclaimer at the top of this episode if you haven't seen gravity well and that should have been clear when we said who the guest was I guess but, so. but it almost seems you're gilding the lily it almost seems not you but the storytelling process because it's still as impactful without that Sorry, you, you're saying when, when, that, when that key moment happens? Yeah, no, just whatever happens within the film. Without no, getting what you're saying is what he's saying, uh, 24 hours till retirement. Yeah. He's, it's talking about that. Oh, okay. Well, just yeah. that. Okay. Just in terms of storytelling. You, what, that's the, the preemptive? No, it's unnecessary in order to heighten the stakes. Which is the only reason for it to be there, is to suggest stakes. I think, it, or, well, or, or, or painful irony. I mean... I think it was character. Oh, for sure, but we've... I guess I find the film so wholly original mm. in almost every single aspect. So then when, from that bit. when a moment comes up <laughs> that I've seen used for manipulating purposes in other films, mm -hmm. uh, you, you know, for comedic weapons. purposes, I'm getting too old for this shit. Right. You know, right. I'm retiring. Right. You know, that piece of business. Yeah. And so yeah, it was just one of the very few moments in the film, and again, you should have tackled me to the ground. No, I, I, if I may. Yeah. Obviously, you and I both know that's more a question for the writers. No, no. But. No, no, without question. And I just meant in terms of, did you ever get wind of a discussion about whether or not that beat lives in, in truth or necessity? No. Nope. That was all you can yeah. do for me. Sorry. No, no. Yeah. No, no apology necessary. Yeah. Um, and I, and I, I, I also apologize if it seemed like I was looking for affirmation in no. in one of those. No, Am no, I no. the only one this bothered? No, 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 because no, 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 no. no because I, I, you know, it really does come from a place of I couldn't be a bigger fan of the film. It's, it's no, but I respect what you're saying because it, the the thing about the, the the movie is that it actually started off as um, more of an art house movie. You know, in the originally Alfonso, it was black and white. Mm. Wow! Um, wow! It was going to be a black and white movie, and it was going to be uh, a much, much smaller event. Wow! But I think what happened, the, the thing is that the movie got bigger. Yeah. And you know, uh, it didn't get Armageddon big. You know, but it it, it got it got it got it, it certainly it evolved from something that was um, tiny and tiny. Yeah. And I think that's just that's just part of what happened when the movie grew. Yeah. Well, that's one of the things that is the most spectacular story coming from the research. Thank you, Jason McIntyre, once again. Um, is the undertaking and the evolution uh, during the filmmaking process as to what we, we the audience, ultimately got to see. Um, and uh, were there various drafts of the script? Was the script itself updated based on the evolution of the elements? Did they constantly update, or they just said, well, we've got the template, which is the screenplay. We're going to uh, stay as true to various elements, but we're on this other mission now, which mm, is to no. build the visual. No, no. The, uh, again, you know, in terms of uh, the visuals, uh, to be honest with you, <laughs> there's, th this is what, uh, part of what is um, so amazing about Alfonso, is that he had the, the, the balls to uh, hang this movie mm. on the visuals yeah. 
And so we're doing all of this work, and Alfonso is pushing, uh, putting all his trust in Tim Weber, but the visuals uh, might have just been really bad. Sure. They could have just, it might have not paid off, in which, in which case nobody would have invested in the movie you know, as an audience. Um, so uh, to answer your question, the visuals were always a completely separate thing. The story was never, the visuals were never going to drive the story at any level. Right. The story was w pretty much, there was, there was some changes that, that went on which is inevitable, but the, the story pretty much remains the same. That's great. That's really great. Uh, just in terms of, of wanting to know every, as much as possible about the, the, the storytelling meeting the artistry. I mean, the truth is, and, and you gave a, another interview that I read where you said, you have to understand, we kind of all sat down together initially and said, how the hell are we going to do this? Yeah, I think, I think that on any movie, there's that, that first meeting, but that this was might like, be true, yeah. but that doesn't compare <laughs> no. to, we're going to create a, a, a world yeah. of outer space that no one's ever seen, and how the human uh, in a... Uh, uh, you're raising my heart rate again, <laughs> just going back, thinking about it, because the, 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 it was, you it's know... It's daunting. It was terrifying and yet um, obviously exciting. Yeah, sure. Completely exciting. Who doesn't want to be challenged in every way, shape, and form? Absolutely. And that's, that's what we all signed on for. You know, we wanted that. Um, but uh, it was so different. And, you know, I've described it in the past rather badly, but it, to me, in my head, the, the, the best metaphor is that um, we're building a machine going downhill and we have to build it fast enough so that we can put the brakes on. Mm. You know, yeah. it, was, it was like we're all on it frantically trying to get this thing done, but it's going, yeah. whether you like it or not. Yeah. And we're either just going to crash right. or we'll actually be able to, to, to manage it. And every single day was like that for three years. Right. You know, every single day was, okay, well, we fixed that. Oh, no, there's this next thing. Yeah. How we, oh, uh, uh, oh, you know, yeah, all, yeah. all the way through. Well, it's just, it's seminal, you know, and I know it's a hard responsibility to take with you the rest of your life, but when Tom Hanks sat here not too long ago and spoke about what 2001 A Space Odyssey meant to him as a film-going audience fan uh, and, and sitting through uh, that visual and having it change his perspective of everything thereafter, imagine, if, if one would, uh, seeing the uh, uh, 2001 A Space Odyssey for the very first time and being on the edge of your seat the entire ride. Hmm. That's what I felt uh, happen in terms of, okay, here's a world in space we've never seen before and I can't find a moment to relax that's, that's, from yeah, beginning that's, to end. That's good to know. That's, that's a nice way of putting it. It's, it's, um, it just changes everything. I'm interested to see what happens now. You know, um, yeah. because it, uh, it, by the way, we obviously, like I was saying, we didn't know that it would be uh, uh, accepted the way that it was. Um, the well, there's two reasons, I think, it's inevitable that the, the follow-up is people trying to do their version. Mm -hmm. You guys made a masterful film and $670 million. Those things go hand in hand mm -hmm. in terms of... The st a studio, no reason to name them, saying, I want my gravity. We need to do our gravity. Mm -hmm. When do we get to do our gravity? Mm -hmm. That's incredibly exciting to be a part of. Yeah, that's, that's um, I think we're all very proud of that. You know, that, that it, um, you know, it raised the benchmark a, li yeah. a little bit. And uh, I know, Sammy, that's never you, a bad thing. You were involved for, for a very long time in the sequel to Titanic, which mm -hmm. unfortunately never you know, the problem was we couldn't get enough ping pong balls. <laughs> well, is that the problem? Yeah. It's, they, you buy them in bulk, you think you're going to get a good deal, but after like 100000 then it starts to get cost prohibitive. Yeah. How many movies just, have been sunk for the same reason? Yeah. Sunk. Excuse me. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. How dare yeah. you. Um, I, I can't thank you enough. Uh, you, you, you've seen the show. You profess to be a fan of the show. You thought you were uh, prepared for a resounding round of who tweeted, and here it comes. Okay, I'm gonna be very, very bad at this. I, I oh, hasten to no, add. Here's hoping. Tremendous. 
Here's hoping. I haven't won in a while. There is money in, involved in this. Uh, he, he has seen the show. <laughs> None of our guests ever know that there's money involved. It's A, it's US dollars. Yeah, so it's about it's 20 US. US. This, is, this is like it's two and a half pounds. Yeah. Okay. It's not even a thing. It's uh, nine, um, nine euro. They'll get you one Toblerone bar. Uh, and also, you don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice poll. You don't have to risk any of your own money. That we would. I didn't bring any, so, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but the dancing Andrew Jackson, there's no wind in But uh, since Lord knows our fans know how the game works, uh, I'm assuming you know how the game works. Uh, so uh, I'll give you a quick refresher. Give me a quick refresher. Okay, but so I'm going to read the tweets one at a time. Yes. As soon as you feel you know who said it, either Tyra, yeah. Paris, or Bieber, yes. you ring in by saying your name. Yes. You ring in, you get it right, you get five points. Yes. You ring in, you get it wrong, you lose three. Got it. Are you ready to play Who Tweeted? The shortest game on the show so far. It's coming up. Okay. okay. Tweet number one. Blessed to spend Christmas with my family. Hope everyone around the world had a blessed Christmas as well. Much love. Kevin, Paris, because there's no way in hell she would write that. <clears throat> Starting in the hole. Yeah. Negative three. That was Justin <laughs> Bieber. I went the other way. A lot of Bieber. these are designed to go the other way. They are. It's the these genius are, of the we game. Got some, the Jamie got some good ones this week. Tweet number two. Just saw The Wolf of Wall Street. By far one of the best film I've ever seen. Sang it, Tyra. I'm so sorry that I was Paris. One of the best film? Yep, I read them as they're written. <laughs> uh, I, I know you just cut and paste these, so you're not doing any editing. Tweet number three. Biggest pet peeve? When people don't finish the water in their water bottles. Just Finish sang it! it! Sang it, Tyra. That is correct! Nicely done, sir. Out of the hole! Tweet number four. Bastard. I love music. Kevin Paris. Deeper into the hole! <laughs> it was Bieber. That was Bieber. Well, he loves it's music. too obvious! You've got <laughs> obvious with these now! I said he was going in the hole! Yeah. <laughs> Back in the hole! Tweet number five. It's all right, Kate. Come on. Yes, there's time. Tweet number five. <laughs> Had such a lovely evening at Sean Penn's Help Haiti Home charity event. Really admire him for all the work he's doing. Kevin Tyra. Tyra. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, right. I need a ruling, Dr. Chen. Who rang in first? I'm going to have to go with a guess here. Duh, I'll have to go with a guess. Well, I was, I was going to say Paris. And oh. you'd be correct. <laughs> Nicely done. I would have been wrong, but oh you, well, there you go. You get the plus. Yeah. Oh, it's be, it's quick becoming a runaway here. It's a route. Tweet number six. <sighs> Feel so happy and proud. Love hearing how much fun you all had tonight at my show. Love you Sang all. Sang a Bieber. Oh no. Too obvious. Finally. Shit. I'm so sorry. Shit. That was Paris. Yeah. See. She, okay, she's, okay. she has a music career. Whew. All right, there's a 10-point swing. Well, this is tweet number seven, so you can get within striking distance, Cape. There's nothing she can't In do. fact, if you get the next two right, I'm gonna win this we'd have ourselves a, a tie oh. for what it's worth. Okay. Tweet number seven. No pressure on you at mm -hmm. all. No, no, no. I just sit there and wait. So you know when it's super cold outside and all you can do is picture yourself at the beach? Kevin Tyra. That is correct. Finally! <sighs> So negative one to positive four at the moment here. Okay. This is it, all how it always works with me. I, I have a, I start off well and it and so, Well, this is it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put this last, uh, the value of this last. This uh, is for the steal. At, at, at 10, 10 bucks. For the steal or, or the points. walk away. Eighth question. Eighth question, eighth and final question worth 10 points. This is a game changing question. Going to surprise a lot of people this week. Kevin Beebs. Oh, jeez. <laughs> I'm so sorry, but that is correct. Oh, <laughs> a come from behind! Oh, I don't believe it. A come from behind! I mean, now, I technically, that you really are tied, and I have a tiebreaker, but... Yeah, I, no, let's go to the tiebreaker. Tiebreaker. We're tied? Yeah, we, we only tied. make... Sometimes we make it worth ten points, but that's only if the guest needs to make up points. <laughs> that's not you need to make that's up points. Exactly. You're tied at positive four, as far as I'm concerned. We are. Uh, tied at positive four. Okay, so now this one, Okay, no okay, okay, okay. This okay, one okay, is okay. for all okay, the marbles. Okay. There's no... One tiebreaker question only. This is it. Answer correct. You take Andy Jackson home. Had, had such a lovely time today. 
at Children's LA. Made me so happy to bring Sang of Paris. That's correct. That is correct. Ladies Nicely done. Oh, that's man, I, that's how you win. That is Listen, how you, you win. Were, you were being very, very polite there. You no, were being very, no, very no, no. Had, no, no. had I had lost, uh, I would have kicked off, obviously. So, <laughs> really? Yeah, so it was probably better that way. I'm so glad sir. Sir. this all worked out. Good luck we, spending like that. Thank around. you very much. No, believe well you done, me. Well done, sir. You Sam Levine. Try and come for mine. Sam Levine. Well done, Mark. That Thank is very much. Thank Sweet. you very much. I appreciate it. Celebrities have so much to say. Who tweeted? Is the game that we just played. And singing, who tweeted? <laughs> Uh, we rarely give him credit for that, and I think it's important. Um, Mark, can you speak just a little bit? Since you'll have an opportunity to get the opportunity to get in front of people and possibly speak uh, in a, uh, a grateful tone, uh, should awards uh, continue to be bestowed upon you, the Academy Award nominations are, are scant four days away. Who knows what will come? I could make my own Are they four days away? I, th I was told the 16th. I may be wrong. Right. Um, the nominations. Uh, Still be here. In, a, in, a, in a practice trial, perhaps. Uh, share some of the gratitude you feel over the victory uh, that just took place. <laughs> um, uh, it has been um, uh, one of the greatest moments in my life uh, to, uh, to achieve this great result. Uh, years in the making, uh, watching this show, all I've ever attained for, all I've ever gone for in my life is this ultimate goal. This, this $20 here means more to me <laughs> than uh, the life of my family. Yeah. Uh, this, this is the ultimate. I'd like to, uh, to thank uh, everybody here. Thank you very much. Indeed. Now again, That's... you may scoff, but if you replace this $20 bill here with <laughs> this Oscar, and give the exact same speech. Wow, means more to me than my own family. Yeah. You yeah. will be arguably the most single uh, remembered uh, acceptance speech of the award ceremony that, that is night. True. That's yeah. a problem. And I will also return home to find uh, that the keys Act have been bags. locked, uh, yeah. changed on the locks. So, yeah. Yeah. Also, for what it's worth, you know, you're going to have to declare that twenty bucks at customs. The Oscar, that's fine. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> they won't ask any questions. That's true. <laughs> um, I can't thank you enough, honestly and truly. I wish you uh, continued success with this extraordinary film. That's uh, very kind of you. Film. Thank you. We didn't get to talk about uh, uh, too much about the nights. No. Uh, the last night? The last night. Mm -hmm. uh, so do you want to say a little bit? Yeah, yeah, yeah no. It's film just... you're in post on now. Yeah, I, I finished, uh, I finished uh, Gravity, and after three years, I promised my family that I would uh, take some time out and uh, you know, spend some time with them. So what I did was uh, I just got on a plane and went to the Czech Republic for three months and left my family behind, um, uh, much to their chagrin, and you know, uh, started editing this movie, which is it's a great story uh, of, for the back of gravity, it's a very, very conventional story, um, but you know, in a very nostalgic way. Mm. Um, and it's, it's got its sort of heart in sort of, uh, uh, Japanese uh, uh, folklore, but at the same time, it's uh, 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 this wonderful mix of cultures. We've got an international cast, and um, Clive Owen, Clive Owen, Morgan. Morgan Freeman. You know, some of the biggest stars from South Korea. Axel Henney's in it. Um, you know, uh, who's, and Axel, by the way, is uh, his, the latest thing he's done is he's playing the Rock's sidekick in uh, Hercules, the Ratna thing. So. Um, oh, wow. uh, you know, it's just this most uh, amazing, uh, again, what, what Kaz, Kaz, the uh, director, has, has done is he's taken a story and it's the execution that is, 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 is the way that it succeeds. And by um, putting together all these different cultures and, and, and um, nationalities in, into the movie and this great story uh, written by Michael Canivas, um, it's, um, for me, to come off of a, a space movie and be kind of cutting uh, a western, as it were, yeah, is uh, you know that stuff doesn't happen. Yeah, this is so it's a great joy. It's called the Last Nights of the Minute, but um, that, that was always the working title. Right. Well, here's to uh, uh, tremendous success with that. Thank and, you very um, much. Uh, uh, continued uh, fun here during the awards season. Don't Thank forget you. to try to have fun uh, when you get to meet. Um, inspirational people like you spoke about. Um, 
That is the fun. Yeah. That's the most amazing stuff. Yeah. yeah, it really is. It puts you in the company of the other greats of the year or past years, and that's... And by the way, it's put me in the company of you guys, so thank you, for, thank you very much. I'm for glad you me. said that. I didn't want to. It's what everyone was thinking. I know that's where you were going, and I didn't want you to have to beg. So. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, Negrin's got autographs ready to give out <laughs> when you leave. Um, thank you for that. Thank you. And this. Uh, as you know, you'll be sitting there uh, uh, looking at your camera doing your version of the Larry King game. Uh, I, I gave yeah. a couple of readers examples uh, at, the, at, the, at the top, and uh, as, as a fan, or so you insist of the show, you clearly know how this works. I will not explain, but it is now, in fact, time. Okay. Here now, Mark Sanger's Larry King game. I once took a week to pass a plastic fork that I accidentally swallowed while simulating fellatio to Howard Hughes. Flagstaff, Arizona, <laughs> you see. Wow! Leave it to our editor. Wow! To have the strongest Larry King game in a year. Eons. No, 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 wow! No, no, no. no. How many rewrites? Hmm? How many rewrites? Came to me in the car. Oh. <laughs> spectacular. That's phenomenal. That is spectacular. We closed the book on yet another episode. This 192, they tell me. Uh, thank you so very much. Thank you very Mark, much. And um, brilliant work, honestly and truly. I can't wait to see the next thing. Uh, to help wrap things up, I want to uh, thank uh, the folks at Squarespace. Now that the show is over, make sure to head over there to squarespace.com to check out our sponsor. They've got um, Elegant. Easily customizable. Customizable? It can't be a word. Customizable. That's what it says. Layouts That's just waiting for you. Remember, make sure to use the offer code Kevin to get 10% off and to let them know we sent you. Thank you, squarespace.com. Or squareface. <laughs> if, uh, nope. <laughs> Let's not bite the hand that feeds the crew. That's a Dick Tracy villain. Oh, squareface. <laughs> Great save! That's why she's the head writer. And thank uh, you, Jamie and Sammy and Dr. Chen uh, out there, Sam, uh, Samantha Ward and Josh Negrin and Jason McIntyre and, of course, Danielle Overlin, our media maven, and um, uh, David uh, Mandel, who uh, continues to be our intern and uh, just back from India, and we're so happy to have him back. And, um, and all of you for listening and watching. Uh, great guests coming up. I'm so very happy to say, uh, Taryn Killam from SNL, uh, Larry David, the end of the month, uh, Anna Ferris, Matt Jones. Adam McKay, it's our next live Adam show. Adam McKay, uh, next live show here will be uh, Super Bowl Sunday. We're doing a specially early show, 12 noon Pacific Standard Time with the director of uh, Anchorman 2. Yes. But don't miss the Larry David, which will be Larry David in the usual time. In our usual time at 2 o'clock mm. PST. Uh, the 26th, which also happens to be somebody's birthday. Look it up online. 26th of January. Paul Newman's is the correct answer, and I think Ellen DeGeneres as well. Wayne Gretzky. Wayne Gretzky. And Andrew Ridgely, the other guy from Wham. Wow. Nice, nicely done. Way to bring that home. <laughs> wow. Uh, that's it for this one. Thanks, uh, and as always, please get out of my face.